it is time for mule deer hunting. The second species for the five deer that I'm going after this year. And it is October 9th, and I'm heading into a remote place in Idaho. It's remote, but not remote at the same time. Like we're back back in here. Chalice is with me and his son Thatcher. Um, they're actually already in here. I got a later start driving over here. And uh, so they're already up here setting camp up. And uh, I'm making my way up in there. Mid 70s right now, full moon. Not the greatest thing for a mule deer hunt. But I'm excited. I've got, realistically, I've only got about two and a half days before we, I gotta head back and get ready for our elk hunt. And uh, so we're making our, getting our, getting into position. There's a lot of pressure down here. A lot of people hunting, coming from all different angles and drainages and everything. We're gonna get set up in one good spot. We're gonna, we're gonna try to get Thatcher, that uh, Chalice's oldest son, his first deer ever. Try to get that on video. And then we'll start looking for a buck for me. But I'm just making my way up in here. Like I said, it's warm. And uh, we'll see. Got a, a very steep hill to climb to get up to where we want to be. But the nice thing is we'll be ready for opening morning tomorrow. Did you come to pack my backpack up to the top? Um, what? You ready to shoot a deer tomorrow? Yeah. You already spotted some? Yeah. In a bowl? Long ways up here. Did you pack your dad's backpack up here? No. All right, let's get up there and glass. Now you guys can probably hear better. We got dropped in out of the wind. We're looking at a huge bull elk right now. Joss has got some phone scope video of. Then how many bucks? Like decent bucks. So there's six. Well, there's five decent bucks right here, and then there's two that are a little bit closer to us that are just a normal four point. But there's there's a good bunch of bucks now. Yeah. So it is. Let me see here. What time is it? I can't see my my watch is underneath my jacket. But uh, we've got probably about half an hour of light left. So just a big glass, and I made good time in here. It's about seven. It's a steep uphill grind all the way in here. But we're just going to get settled in here. I'll show you a bunch of phone scope footage of all the animals we've seen. And uh, we're going to be ready for night. I got up here in Chalice. I already got camp made. So that's pretty awesome. But then we'll settle in for a sleepless night awaiting opening day. And yeah. that, that's your hair. It's going to try to hopefully get his first buck. So pretty exciting. opening day of deer season here in Idaho. This is my 23rd opening day and uh, pretty excited about what we got. We saw uh, 16 bucks last night down in the bottom and uh, luckily the wind stopped up here. It's a really nice morning and uh, we're going to sneak down the ridge about halfway down and like I said before this area gets a lot of pressure so we're going to get a nice vantage point where we can get set up where the deer, where we've seen them in the past, escaping and different things. And we're just going to be patient and sit there and hopefully get a deer. Thatcher can shoot about 150 yards, what he's comfortable with. So we'll get set up with him. I'll get set up across the draw in case something gets out over that way. But uh, we're excited. We're going to sneak down in there and uh, see what the, the day holds for us.
see about five bucks right now. Got one pretty decent four points right at 270. Just a little too far for the Thatcher to shoot right now. So we're just gonna be patient, wait, and just wait for one of these deer to get a little closer for Thatcher. But we've getting some really good phone scope footage of them, so we just, they have no idea we're here, so we're just gonna be patient and uh, just wait and see what happens. Just had a group of guys on horses come over the hill about 1,500 yards away, shoot at a buck, and now they're like almost galloping down the draw. <laughs> so, the bad thing is they're gonna push these deer, these nicer bucks that we've been sitting on, they're gonna push them away from us where we can't go and uh, I don't know. Like we said, we knew it was going to be fast and furious, but they're like less than a thousand yards away now. These horses are coming right at us. Makes no sense why you would just go bahan on horses through the bottom of these draws. Huh. But we're going to watch these other bucks and see what they do, and we might have to pick up and make a mad dash somewhere if they push them. Well, the definition of cluster has happened. Those guys on the horses spooked the big bucks we were chasing. We ran around the knob, had them about 440, just getting set up to shoot. Look right above the bucks. There's a guy and his daughter, it looked like right above them. So they don't want to shoot towards them. Those bucks went into some thick stuff and out of the way. And they look up the ridge, there's five more horses coming our way. Two other guys coming our way. So, we're just going to get to where we can shoot, be patient, and uh, see if people will push something. Pretty crazy. Well, well, what were your thoughts on the morning? The joy of public land hunting. Super frustrating. We had everything set up just right for Thatcher to shoot a decent buck for his first buck. But uh, there was a guy on every ridge, and there were horses everywhere. And the horses obviously don't care if they spook bucks everywhere because they can just try to chase them down. But that was fun to see the deer, but the frustrating thing was none of them could stay close enough for Thatch to shoot. So we're gonna, we've, I think we figured out where these bucks have gone, so we're gonna go find a place to watch them and see if they come out tonight. So it's crazy because these bucks, they literally went to the thickest part they can get into. They went in there, they stopped. And then we can still see little bits and pieces of them. There's two other guys, though, I think, that saw them go in there, though. And we're just going to be patient and sit here, but they look like they're going to go loop around and try to get on them. If they get on them, though, they're going to bust. So we're just going to get set up to where we think they would go if they did bust. But, yeah, sometimes you got to play the people in your favor and hope, hope it works out. Like I said, Thatcher had that bucket 270 yards, and he's more comfortable. He's been shooting at 150 and so we're like, ah, we'll be patient, but you never know. You never know. It's going to get hot for the day, so that's going to be the bad thing. We're going to be out here all day just sitting and waiting. We are set up straight across from these bucks, about 600 yards, and then my gun's set up right over here. We're hoping they come down and give Thatcher a shot. But I'm set up across the long ways if they end up going farther. But these two guys that we saw, the only two guys we know that saw where these bucks went, they're trying to move in right on top of them. So we're just gonna be patient. Hopefully they'll be, if those deer come out, they'll come down to where we'll get a shot.
That's your great job, buddy. He's going down. Dude, how exciting was that, buddy? Awesome. He's dead right there. I can see him kicking. Dude. You hit your first shot, buddy. Beautiful shot. Dude, that's, that's a great buck. My gosh. Dude, how do you feel? Big hug. Can we get that shot? I know. You guys, I'm hoping I got that on video. I'm pretty sure. That's your great. So cool, guys. We were so frustrated. And then we took these guys, because they were coming through. We're like, okay, if they, if they go through there. And it just worked out perfect, guys. Honestly, Thatcher's first ever big game animal. Chalice has been with me when Brody shot his elk and his turkey and a lot of them. So our main goal today was to get Thatcher a buck. And we were a little nervous, like I said, we didn't know. I mean, we had a little farther shots in here. And uh, this, it just worked out absolutely perfect. It couldn't have been better. No, I mean, like, when you saw him coming, I was just like, holy crap. I wish there was another big buck. I know, because you could have shot it. Because like that, there was only one good buck that Thatcher shot, and I was ready just in case. But they were all small, little fork and horns and little three points. So, good job, buddy. Awesome. You made a perfect first shot. Oh yeah, right, right in him, right in his shoulder. Going to your head. Um, if I miss, is it gonna like run at, come at me, or is it gonna <laughs> run away from me? Because it was so close. Yeah, he stopped just right there. You followed him perfect, and you made an awesome shot, Patch. Good job. Oh, I'm so excited for you, buddy. Thanks. That was honestly, Thatcher, so cool. I would have shot that buck. That's a nice buck. That's you, a nice that's an amazing first buck, dude. So, so happy for you. That's so cool. And the fact that we got it close enough. That was oh really my goodness! Fun. Like, I, when it comes to hunting, like, so there's a lot of meant to bees. That's a big meant to be, buddy. Yeah. So cool. Because they could have, they could have ran straight up the top. They could have ran out the bottom. They, like, they had no clue we were even here. And your dad whistled, and he's like, "What the heck?" Boom! I was so nervous that I didn't even feel the gun kick. Yeah, isn't that funny how that happens? Oh, thank we worked, we worked, we worked those guys perfectly. <laughs> yes, we did. <laughs> hey, hey, mom. Hey. Oh my heck. Um, I was just, um, so we were just watching this, um, hill full of trees w with, um, some deer in it. Then some other guys came down and pushed the deer out onto this hill. So, me and Dad and Ross ran up and, um, set up and, um, Dad called for the buck and it stopped and looked at us and I just shot it. That's right, you, and you hit it? How many tries did it take? Um, one shot. Yeah, just one. <laughs> That's amazing. It looks so big. I know, yeah. it's a super big buck for a first one. <laughs> it's even got cheaters. Thatcher. It's got cheaters. It's got an inline cheater on this side. Oh my heck, Thatcher, it's amazing. Mm -hmm. Riggins is going to be so excited. You should know that, that they uh, cried and cried last night. They missed you so much. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to be excited. Way to go, bud. Thanks. Nice, and now it starts the hard work, huh, Dad? Yep. Mm -hmm. You happy? Yes. You should be, that's cool. Ladies and gentlemen, the buck is loaded up and it's about noon. We've got to hike all the way back up to the top. Get this thing in some shade and then we'll come back down here this afternoon. We think the nicer bucks that were in that brush block, we think they're still there. They never came out. So we're going to go hang out at camp for a little bit. We'll sneak back down here and hopefully they'll sneak out and want to go down the same direction they went in there and we'll be ready for. Thatcher's 
packing his buck. I should have had one of the boys' as door gunners, huh? Pretty cool. sneak back down pretty essentially where we were this afternoon or this morning and uh, like I said we never saw those bigger bucks come out of that brush pocket so and we know there's some more deer over here we're just gonna get down there and get set up and wait and see if something will be working its way down one of these draws but never know it's I think most of the people are pretty much gone two years ago when we were in here we saw quite a few deer opening day in the evening because no one else was around so hopefully we have it all to ourselves This bush right here is about our only cover. So those bucks that Thatcher's buck was with were straight across the draw here. We're hoping they come down the draw and then we're the way up this draw. But we're a little too scared to sneak up there even more to where we see the bottom of the draw if we get spotted. So we're gonna hang out here for a little bit and see if we can, if we can get them spotted going through the trees. Alright, so finally went behind the mountain and that bigger two point he's bedded down low then we had a couple cow elk come through and go through right through where were those other deer we thought went to and just spotted a pretty decent four point up above so they went into that first brush pocket and then they stayed and the other bucks went to the next one so come to show you how smart these deer are they get pressure they just go to the thickest spot and bed down and then most people aren't back in here anymore because you have to back back in here to spend the night. So they just hunt the mornings. We've got about 45 minutes till last shooting light. The big four gun horn still bedded down. The other four point we saw, he's working his way to the left when he didn't come down a few hundred yards. And uh, these other does we were watching, they're working their way down. We're hoping all these deer are gonna start working down, working down this way. There's kind of a funnel right here. And we'll be able to get set up. We got another big group of deer over here with some bucks in it that look like some guys are making a play on right now. But it's just crazy with all the pressure in here this morning. You wait a little bit and they'll start kind of going back to normal. They're still, I think these deer would be out a lot earlier if they wouldn't have been spooked all day. I just worked up into these rocks just trying to get a better vantage point into this draw and uh, that two butt that big two point is back out on his feet right now um, he's just kind of working his way out of the sagebrush or that brush over there so I got to get back down there real quick and uh, see if I can get up close enough where I can get set up for a good shot I want to get prone on him he's about if I can get up there where I want he should be between three and four hundred yards so I'm gonna sneak down there real quick and uh, see if we can get a shot on this big two point I'm pretty excited he's a cool buck um, none of those other bigger four points showed up and I can't pass an opportunity like this on such a cool unique buck Yes. Oh my 
goodness. I got cactus in my arms. That big forky took us down to the last. We've got about 11 and a half minutes of light left. He finally got up where we were in position. I got on him twice in the cactus and I couldn't see through all this grass. So I moved up, Chalice stayed behind with the phone scope and uh, he was walking to the left and I finally yelled a little bit and Chalice whistled and he stopped and I just boom and I just whop. That's cool, big fork and horn. <laughs> guys, I have a very limited amount of time. This is my only mule deer hunt for this project for the Icon Tour shooting all the five deer species. That means species two is down and uh, I wish I had more time that we've been seeing some really great bucks. But I am leaving for my elk hunt in two and a half days. And that's my main goal is get my dad a big bull along with this project. So when that big fork and horn, not every day you see a cool big fork and horn. I'm excited. That's what it is. I was excited when he stood up. My heart started racing a little bit. So that's when you know it's it's meant to be. And uh, like I said, last uh, eight minutes now. So crazy. We gotta go down there and get him. Luckily, I'm gonna be able to get a base map marker on him. We'll range him. He was right at 336 where I shot from. And uh, I'll put a remote marker over there. The coolest thing was right when I shot, I could see my muzzle blast just poof. So, <laughs> we're gonna have a long night. It is gonna be a long night. Two bucks though. You know what, like I told Chalice two years ago when I was in here, I passed a small four point up here on top last night, or last day of opening day, or pff, last light of opening day. And uh, I lived to regret that a little bit. So I was like, you know what? I told Chalice with that fork and horse, if he gets up, I was like, I'll shoot him because I'll be happy with that. So we brought it down to the last day. We started with early. Thatcher shot an amazing buck. Um, Good shot, I told buddy. him I was gonna shoot a big, I told him I was gonna shoot a fork and horn. Yeah, you did. This whole trip, <laughs> I'm like, I'm gonna shoot a fork and horn. I'm gonna shoot a fork and horn. Right in front of you, I'm gonna shoot a fork and horn. <laughs> Shot a fork and horn. <laughs> Look at that. Just a big old fork and horn. Like, how cool is that? <laughs> He is bigger than he looked, too, on the... Yeah. Dude, base map saved me on this one. We got up here, and uh, I thought he was down lower, and I kept looking at my base map, and the remote marker I said, said he was up higher, and we're like, there's no way he's up high. There's no way he's up high. <laughs> he was up high. Look at that thing. That's a cool buck. <laughs> Oh man, too bad we have a long ways to get out of here, huh? Yeah. He's got such a pretty coat. Shoot my uh, sick of black tail, fork and horn, mule deer, fork and horn. I might need to shoot everything else in the fork and horn just to keep it going, but that's too cool of a buck not to shoot with a limited amount of time I got. What happened, Ross? Dude, every time I drop down to get set up to shoot, just happened to find cactus. Got it in my <laughs> leg, got it in my arm. But it's worth it. I guess we could call this buck the cactus buck, even though he's not a cactus buck. He's got a huge body. You guys, it's pretty amazing to uh, get a cool buck like this. So we had a lot of ups and downs today. And uh, I had very, very limited time. This was my only mule deer tag for trying to shoot the five deer species. And uh, I only had about two and a half days to hunt them. So it wasn't like the most amazing thing for that. Cause it's like kind of felt a lot of pressure of trying to get something done. But our main goal today was to get Thatcher his buck. And that was such a cool buck and everything worked out so cool. And this buck just worked out. And uh, I mean, we had 15 minutes of light left when this guy kind of finally stood up. He stood up at like five o'clock and we're like, ah, we'll just kind of keep him in our back pocket, see if anything else kind of pops out. And uh, he finally stood up, like I said, 15 minutes before last light and it was kind of hectic trying to get down so I didn't get a lot of video uh, trying to get set up and different things like that. Um, very fast hunt today. We got them both done in the first day. Uh, so, I don't know. 
second species of the five deer species this year for the Icon Tour. And uh, we've got a pr pretty cool extra project for you guys with these five deer species. And uh, man, took out the trusty 308. I uh, shot the <clears throat> the new Cross 65, and uh, I put took this one out also the 308 and felt more confident with it because I had to dope everything in my 2400 ABS. And uh, so the trusty 308 came out, and man, just and made a perfect shot on this buck right behind the shoulder. Um, the exit wound's like I think literally just like right there. So. It's about 8 o'clock right now. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got to take this buck all the way back up to the top where Thatcher is and where camp is. So we're going to have a long day tomorrow. So we'll get a lot of video for you guys tomorrow. But uh, I can't, 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 can't thank you guys enough for watching. Like I said, the forking horns are, are kind of what's on my radar right now. But uh, if you have to shoot a forking horn, I'm happy it's a forking horn like this. this is a it is about 9.15, we got this buck all quartered and everything off him and loaded in packs. Thatcher's paying me back for packing his buck out. He's packing back straps and inner tenderloins. So we've got a long ways to go up to the top, but uh, it's gonna be pretty awesome with the full moon. And uh, man, what an incredible opening day in Idaho. Second species, got three more to go. But so far, first day I hunted sick of blacktail, shot a buck. First day I hunted mule deer, shot this buck. So maybe we'll keep that streak alive, but we've got a long ways to go and a short time to get there. And if you know that song, leave it in the comments below. Finally back to camp. It is 10:35, and uh, we feel really good. Drop this pack and get a good night's rest. Good. We've been taking it really easy. It's about 9:30. We're in camp, kind of all packed up, and uh, we're trying to set ourselves up to pack these bucks down. Charles and I each have a full buck going down the two and a half miles. So. But I ran into some few other guys, I've seen a few deer this morning, and uh, it's been nice just being able to relax. So we're just kind of taking it all in, going to get things ready, packed up really nice, and uh, start moseying our way down the mountain. But hard to complain about shooting two bucks on the first day, then you get to sleep in and enjoy yourself a little more. That might work. Two hinds there, and then the <laughs> I wish my deer had a smaller body. I think that's how it works. It's gonna be a very slow go. But I still gotta get Heather quarters. Alright. So maybe do that the same way. Okay, it's looking like something. Look, they've got well, this one strap. Oh my goodness. That's where I get camp in the bag. We are loaded up with extremely heavy packs and uh, getting ready to head down. All we kept saying is having a good pack makes this like, if you were just having a regular backpack without all the cinch straps in the frame, it'd literally be a host. So we're excited to get out of here. It's about 11 o'clock and uh, we've got a long, steady, downhill drop all the way down to the bottom but I'd rather be heavy than coming out of here light with nothing.
All right. We just got back to Chalice's house. Ooh. And just out of curiosity, because you never have a scale, we're going to weigh packs. So I packed out Thatcher's two hindquarters and two shoulders, and he took out his back straps in the head. But on Ross's pack, he took out two hindquarters, two shoulders, his back straps, and his head, and his rifle. And camp. And all of the stuff we took up for camp, so. Whoa, it's gonna be It's gonna be heavy. I'm gonna say 90 pounds. 90? That's my guess. Might be a little over, over. So, Ross. I have water, too. I drink water. We, okay. won't, <laughs> we won't tell you how much Ross weighs. We'll just tell you what the pack ends up weighing. Oh, I don't care. <laughs> I weighed 227. All right, so here we go. What if I break your scale? Three, 348. 348? 348. All right, so we're gonna do some quick math to see how much this pack weighs. 121 pounds. <laughs> That's super heavy. No wonder that freaking pounds. sucked. That was bad. We gotta do that again. We're gonna verify. So you're, you got three what? Three forty-eight. Three forty-eight on the scale. What'd you get? Three forty-seven and a half. Three forty-seven and a half. So one hundred and twenty. One hundred and twenty pounds. All right, I've got the pack on, gun in hand, because I packed this rifle out. We'll see what we are right now. What are you at? 261. All right, 261. Point six. Point six. Minus 180. 81. So I was 81 pounds. I don't feel so, yeah. as bad because Chalice, Much lighter. Chalice went down ahead of me and I was like, I took some breaks and I was like dying. I don't feel <laughs> as bad now. Like that makes me feel a little better about myself. So that tells you though. So Thatcher took the back straps and the head from his and that, uh, that made a difference of 40 pounds. Yeah. That's crazy. That made a difference of 40 pounds. I don't feel as bad about myself. Though. Yeah, I don't either.